Yeah, well, maybe a little. A little. Yeah, I got everything shut off. It's almost dark in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Live from Brooklyn. It's Monday night. And I'd <coughs> love to introduce the crew to you. First off, from Columbus, Ohio, we have Mr. Donald Culp. Say hello, Donald Culp. Hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. <laughs> and then we slide on down to Nashville with Mr. John Tudor. Yes, hello, everybody. And then it's back to Brooklyn, where I'm still dodging bullets. And the cars. Oh. Oh, well. Um, which one of you guys wants to pray? Open us up with a word of prayer. I'll pray. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Don. Oh, most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are gathered here this evening to share your word, to become closely, more closely knit together as a family, and to learn more about you and how to be better at walking on this word on a daily basis. Thank you for your love for every one of your kids. I thank you for, especially for Dana and for healing her. I thank you for uh, her resisting the, the problem and speaking to that evilness that's causing whatever it is that's giving her all that pain. I I just rebuke all that pain that's in here, Father. Thank you for uh, for the healing power, just overpowering her and uh, making her well. I just thank you for blessing her and blessing Michael and their family and and for healing them up real good. And thank you for uh, Franco and for his healing, Father. I thank you for all those uh muscles and tendons and and ligaments and bones and everything to be uh, working uh, working perfectly in that uh, wonderful back that you made for him and I thank you for uh, uh, John and Elizabeth and for the wonderful blessing that they are to us and that that you are to them, and I thank you for the healing that's taken place there and for the blessing that they are to everyone that they see and meet and that everyone that hears them. I thank you for Don as he shares the word tonight, for blessing him and blessing everyone that hears the word because we know that it won't return void. And it is uh, what is the power that you have given to us as those words, power in those words. So we just thank you, we praise you, we love you, and we just look forward to a wonderful evening in your word, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, Don, can you mute yourself? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you know, I got to thinking, um, there's a real problem with the net. You know that? Day in and day out, there's a problem with the net. Christine, can you turn that down just a little? Thank you. There's a problem with the net. And, you know, what are you going to do about this problem with the net? Well, I found the solution. So I want you to, we're going to go, let's see here. Just a second here.
Okay. And we're going to go find the solution in John 21. So, we don't know a lot about what happened. The chapter before this was the, crucif or the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't know much about what happened between then and his ascension. This is one of the things we do know that happened. Afterwards, to understand that afterwards, you have to read chapter 20. That was where he, uh, um, first off, Jesus appeared in the room with the, the 11. It says 11, and everybody immediately thinks, oh, well, that, that's Judas wasn't there because he'd gone and killed himself. But the truth of the matter is Thomas wasn't there. Judas was. That's a whole other teaching that I'm not going to get into. But Judas did not kill himself before this point. All right. So then a couple of days, eight days later, they were in a room again and Jesus appeared again. And this time Thomas was there. And Thomas believed when he saw what happened. We're, we're going to go over that eventually here. So afterwards, Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus. By the way, Didymus means twin. Thomas was a twin. He had a twin brother or a twin sister. Nathan, Nathaniel from uh, Canaan in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee. Now that's John and James. I mean, you have the three pillars of the church, Peter, James, and John here, along with a few, you know, uh, Thomas and uh, Nathaniel, and, um, and two other disciples. One of them, I believe, is um, Lazarus. We'll get into that later. And they were come together. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out and fish, Simon Peter told them. As they, and they said, no, 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 no. Don't, you can't do that, man. You got to hang tough. It's only been eight days. No, that's not what they said. We'll go with you. So all these, the pillars of the church and a couple of apostles and some disciples, I'll go out fishing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shores, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. So... Uh, Whoops. One second here. All right. Let me see if I can. I'm run, sorry, I'm running into a technical glitch here. Uh, I know what to do. Okay, there we go. Oh. All right, um, Don, would you mind running scripture for me? Just go to John 21 on Bible Hub. It 
It's the NIV. And then share, your, share it on your screen. Okay, never mind. I got it. I have a backup plan. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Thomas, Thomas was actually a, a disciple as well. So I want to take a look at you know, Thomas is remembered for doubting. He's not remembered for this. Let's go to John 11. And we'll slide on down to verse 16. <clears throat> then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go with him that we may die with him. Thomas was willing to go to a place where Jesus said he was going to die and die with him. At least, you know, at least that's how he felt at that moment. With the disciples, you could never tell because they were all, it's all over the place. Thomas is not remembered for this. He's remembered for doubting. Um, that he had been raised and then but Thomas comes through at the end. Let me go here to going over to uh, John what twenty. Go over to John twenty. Here it is. We're we're going to see that. Uh, Jesus appears disciples. Okay, Jesus has appeared to the disciples. Let's see. On the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together and the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his, his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, I am sending you. See, Jesus Christ was the first sent one, the first apostle. Now these guys are being made apostles to go out into the world. And he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Okay, so. And then, now when Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12 was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. <coughs> A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said unto Thomas, Put your fingers here in my hands. Reach your hand out and put in my side, and stop doubting and believe. Then Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have believed, you are blessed. Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not recorded in this book, but they are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. That's interesting. The last verse flat out states he's the Son of God, and the book of John is the book that uh, portrays Jesus Christ as the Son 
of God. You know, it's pretty it's pretty interesting stuff that Thomas would believe when he saw him, Jesus is blessed. You know, I've never seen Jesus Christ in his resurrected form. Often you'll hear people say, don't get vaunted in your faith because you could be the next Thomas. Well, I have never seen Jesus in his resurrected form yet. I believe that God raised him from the dead. So that argument holds no water. Now, I also want you to note that Thomas did come through. He believed in the end. So, you know, he went from being doubting Thomas to believing Thomas. I'm trying to get my notes separated here. Sometimes this printing paper is difficult to work with. Okay, um, so Thomas called Jesus God. That means Jesus is God, right? No, 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 no. That shouldn't be a capital G. It should be a lowercase g. There were all kinds of gods. They had hundreds of gods. But in this particular case, it was meant as a sign of respect, like you call a king your highness. It's the same thing. Thomas was just trying to show deep respect for him. He could have also called him my Lord. That still wouldn't make him God because Lord just means an exalted one. And if anybody deserved to be exalted, it was certainly Jesus Christ. Notice that all 12 had seen Jesus in the chapter 20 of John. Let's see. Okay, doesn't really say that here. Just as all the later his disciples were at the house again. Okay, so in any case, notice, uh, okay, I want all the principles here to be identified. So let's go see. Who the sons of Zebedee are according to the word. And that's in Matthew chapter 20. Let's see, chapter 20. I'm going to just do this all in the NIV, just simply because it's easier to do it all in one version. Okay. Oh, it's four. Not 20. <laughs> Pardon me. And starting down in verse 21. Going from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. And they were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing the nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Okay, there's a, people assume that this was the first time they ever saw him. I don't believe that. I believe they knew about him. Peter knew about him. Long before they, these guys were called, they knew about Jesus. Jesus had just been mulling it over with the father who, who he should be calling. And these are the people that, with God's help, Jesus chose. All right. Um, this is where Jesus called John's and James. So far, everyone we've identified is uh, an apostle, chosen and called by Jesus Christ himself. The last culprit is named Nathaniel from Canaan. 
he is a disciple, not an apostle. But he was known because they were his name was listed. Okay, chapter 20, we have the incident with Thomas doubting Christ, having, having been raised. Now we're looking at the very next thing talked about, what to do, what do Thomas, Peter, James, and John say? I go fishing. And that is Peter, who is the head over the ministry to the circumcision. So James and John surely must say, oh, no, Peter, don't do that. Don't go. These men just, uh, oh, Peter, don't do that. Nope, they don't go. These men had just a short time before had seen, a week before had seen Jesus and his resurrected body more than three times. Now, I realize it may have been a few days, but it couldn't have been more than 39 or 40 because Jesus ascended on the 40th day. If you read through the Old Testament, you'll find that Israel had a problem with being faithful, even after seeing the most spectacular things. They have the Passover in Egypt. The Red Sea parted. The entire Egyptian army drowned. And then they believed those who said that we shouldn't pass over the Jordan because the people on the other side are too powerful. David sought after God. Then Solomon forgets God for a long time. This goes on and on throughout the Old Testament. Israel always forgetting God. So we have the heads of the church to be here going back to fishing. Let's see what happened when Jesus called these men. Okay, let's go to Matthew 4, 18. Oh, oh we're already there. Okay. It's Jesus was walking, but... Oh, we already read that. So that gives us some information about who James and John were. Let's look at Mark 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, hold that horse and let me get on. That's Mark 1. It's an incredible the difference between Mark 1 and Matthew and Luke 1. In uh, Matthew and Luke 1, it's, it takes two chapters for them to get through the birth of Jesus Christ. By the end of chapter 1 in Mark, Jesus has been busy. Very busy. Let's look at verse 16. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting net nets into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you, I will send you to be fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Again, I don't believe this was the first time they saw him. They knew who he was. He they were already disciples. When he'd gone a little farther, Farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left Zebedee and followed him. <coughs> okay, so that's where we are now. We've got James and John. Okay, the same basic information but it feels like something is missing. These men were leaving their boats and their nets behind them, forsaking everything. Let's look at Luke 5. So he told you Luke, takes, Luke and Matthew and Luke take a long time to get to things that Mark is already there and you know left them in the dust. Okay. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, it's a sea of Galilee. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left by the fishermen who were washing their nets. 
he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. And they sat down and he taught the word from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, there's a great, there's a great, great principle here. Jesus Christ wasn't asking them to do this for nothing. He knew he was going to end up doing something to pay them in some way. Uh, so he tells them to cast out to the deep. And Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say, let, let down the nets. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Or actually, in the, in the text, it's, I will let down the net. Singular. When he had done so, they caught such a large number of fish in the net they, that it began to break. And they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat so full that they began to sink. Can you imagine that? Imagine what would have happened if they'd let down their nets, if they'd followed the word. Of, I mean, pretty cool what happened when they let down the net. But imagine what would have happened if they had let down their nets. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell on his knees and said, Go away from me, my Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and his com companions were stone astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And Jesus said unto Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled the boats ashore and left everything and followed him. Now, I can't imagine they just left the fish there to rot. Um, I'm sure they took care of things that they needed to take care of. See, the Bible doesn't give you every detail of every situation. Sometimes there are things that, you know, you just logically leave out. Okay. Let's see here. Well, it seems the preacher knew what he was talking about. The catch was so large that it'd take... We so limit God, we do, for our lack of faith or of trust. God is so willing to give you things that you need and want, and we, like stubborn children, refuse to take what is, our, what is offered. Let down your nets. Think I'm going to make that my policy from now on, to let down my nets. and not limit God by only letting down a net. Well, in the end, these men caught, came through. They forsook all that they know and forsook the, their lives and followed Jesus Christ. Let's get back to John 21. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, hold that horse and let me get on. All right, we got through the first um, verse five. He called out to him, to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, throw down your net. And again, in the original, it's nets on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did. They were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. 
As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken off and jumped into the water. He was, uh, for those of you who don't know the clothes they wore, there was uh, something similar to an undershirt. It started from their neck and went down to about mid-calf. It was a nice long tunic. For poor people, that's all they had. For people who were a little better off, they had an outer garment. So Peter was probably sitting there uh, with his tunic wrapped around himself so he wasn't exposed. And then he put the outer garment back on, jumped in the water. He wasn't going to wait for them to get there. He went ahead of them. Um, the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw the burning coals of, and fish were on, the, on some of the bread. And Jesus said unto them, bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even so, many of the nets was um, many net was not torn. Jesus said unto them, "Come and have breakfast." You know that's a they always were eating together, and you know that that's a real sociable thing. If you have a fellowship that you go to, that fellowship should get together and meet. I mean, when I grew up in the Word, we, we were dumb kids. I was only nine, 19 or 20, and, you know, we did have a couple parties where we all just got together and ate together and enjoyed each other's fellowship. But our fellowships back then, they were scheduled for 45 minutes, from like usually from 7 to 7.45. Some nights it was 10.30 before everybody left. Because we'd just sit around enjoying each other's company, the full sharing. And, you know, I, I, I really wish that we had those days back again because it was so sweet and so motivating. It's why I'm here now, because I saw what happened with these people. And we became, our hearts got knit together in love and you know, I'm not going to talk about what happened to all of them because none of it's good. But boy, during that time, it was so sweet and so loving. And we had such a good time together. Um, so Jesus said, let's have some breakfast. So Simon Peter climbed back and dragged us ashore. And Jesus, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these, the fish? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Okay, one second here, looking for a note. Okay. All right. Verse, where are we? Verse 16. Again, Jesus said to Simon, said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Now you have two different things here. You have take care of, uh, feed my lambs, then take care of my sheep. Lambs are newborns. That's the younger people in the fellowship. Take, we have to take care of them. But Peter was also assigned to watch over the, the maturer people. Okay, and then the third time, he said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
And Peter was hurt this time because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. So he was not only supposed to feed the sheep, he was supposed or take care of the sheep, he was supposed to feed the sheep. See, that's the thing. If you want to get into teaching, like we do here, you have to be willing to know that you're feeding sheep as well as feeding lambs. Okay, verse 18. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. And that when you, but when you are older, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said to, this to indicate to Peter, Peter, which would glorify God, but a uh, kind of death he would glorify God with. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw a disciple whom Jesus loved and was following them. This is the one who he had leaned back on at the Last Supper, and he had asked who was going to betray you. But when Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, a rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain, if I want him to remain alive, what is that to you? The disciples who testified to these things, who wrote them down, we know that testimony is true. Jesus did many other things but they couldn't all be written down. That's why I know there's stuff missing from the Bible. It's not critical stuff. It's not things we need to know. Everything we need to know is there. Um, whatever you do, though, don't read into things. You know, like with the, the disciples spreading the rumor that the disciple whom Jesus loved was going to live till he returned. Don't go doing that. Read what is written and just teach that. Um, so there you have solved the problem of the net. Just follow Jesus. Let him do the guidance and direction. And then we can... Uh, We can all, you know, there's going to be times where things aren't going to get be pleasant. But we can always, always, always keep teaching the word. Keep teaching the accuracy of the word. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this night. I thank you for the truths that are in this teaching, that we've got to feed the lambs those who are newly acquired into the fellowship. We have to take care of the sheep, those who are maturing. We have to take care of them and watch over them. And then we have to feed the sheep. And Father, that's just what we're doing right here. We're feeding the sheep. And I lift to you, John and Don and Mike and Dana and whoever else has been a part of this crew. And I just thank you for watching over them and protecting them and for the rewards they're going to get for having done what we're doing here. And I thank you for this in your son's name. Amen. So you guys can uh, un unmute yourself. Now, you, Amen. you, you are going away. We... Oops, I keep forgetting uh, <laughs> these people over here. These people right here will be staying here. 
We'll see you in fellowship after hours. Uh, I got to get that straight. It's I got to. I always want to point where you aren't because <laughs> actually on my screen you're sitting here, but when I point down at you, I have to be over here because it's all reversed. Enough to drive a man crazy. So, either of you two got anything you want to say? I got my laptop. Well, right? I did look up that word net the second time in John just a minute ago, and I, I, I thought you said it was plural. I don't know. Maybe you didn't, but it, it's not plural. It's not plural. Okay, I was wrong then. Yeah. I mean, you might want to double check that, but. Yeah, I will. But I'm sure uh, if you looked it up, I'm sure you're right. Yeah, it wasn't plural. That's correct. It it was was what's Don saying? Yeah. Can you hear him now? No. He's got two screens up there now. Yeah, I know. There we go. There. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear him, John? No. no. Okay, don't worry about it. I'm not. I mean, it's kind of strange. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, that's I all. don't either. All right. So, in any case, <laughs> I thought I, I thought I had been taught once that it was plural. The one is plural, and the other one is singular. Okay, you're okay. you're correct. All right. Yeah. Well. Yeah, because he told them to let down their nets, plural. Plural. And, and they said, them. okay. And they said, okay, we'll let one of them out. We'll let down your our net. We'll let out a net, a net. Can you imagine, yeah. can you imagine yeah. what the take of fish would have been if they had let down nets? Where Where is that record? Tw John, is John that John? John 20. And um, what was the other one? One second here, let me check. There's John 20, Matthew 4. No, not Matthew 4. Luke 5. Yeah, it's Luke chapter 5. Like you said, like Don taught when he was teaching last week. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus has already done 60 things by the end of the chapter. It, it takes until um, ch chapter 5 and Luke to get to. So, in any case, can you imagine, you know, and, and the whole point here that I want to make is we can't limit God. We've got to get out of our own heads and into, you know, God tells us to let down the nets, we let them down. Yes, yeah, sir. I hear that loud and clear, Don. And I mean, I'm just as guilty of it as everybody else is. You know, God God wants us to do so much, and we limit him. Uh. Mm. And it's time to, you know, maybe add that to your prayers. Lord, just let me let down my nets today. Mm. So, either of you got any comments? Well, the only thing I would say is that, like I, like I heard you say, the, uh, on the first uh, recording, I mean, the first time the nets was plural, and they only threw out one net, and the nets broke. And so uh, that's why I wanted to check. It seems like it would be more 
I don't know how to say a more of a teaching uh, to, uh, type of uh, experience for Peter. If Jesus just used net, throw out the net and the net didn't break and they hauled in a bunch of fish and he would recall the time before when Jesus told him to let down the net. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a lot of this, this, a lot of, a lot of obedience would be imprinted on him then. Yeah. The other, the other places in Luke five verses four and five, where he told him to let out the nets plural. And then in verse five, he says, okay, we'll let out the net. And then their nets did break. The yeah. net, their net, singular net did break. That was uh, Luke 5, 4 and 5. Yeah, but in John 20, they take in a haul of 150 some odd fish. Yeah. Big fish. Big yeah. fish. And, and their net didn't break that time. Yeah, and it didn't break that time because that's what he had told them before. And yeah. So two different situations there. Yep. Oh, it's going to be fun editing this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, well, I, I really, uh, I, I enjoyed you tying the two in together. I'd never seen that before, so that was kind of nice to me. Yeah, it, it, it's an incredible, you know. The guy who I heard teach this the first time said uh, something about, hey, Peter, it's the Lord. We've been through this already. You've done it before. <laughs> I know. When I saw the title, I forgot the name. What's the title? Net? The, what was, what's the title? The prob uh, problem with the net. Yeah. I, I, oh, I thought net. you were going to. I thought it was something about basketball at first. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the internet. Exactly. That's what I was going the internet. For. Go cast for out it. your internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can't cast out my internet. Okay, I'll cast one of them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was the whole intention behind that title, to get people to think it was one thing, and then you hit them with a word. Uh, uh, so. and surprise them. Uh. See, Christianity has become too predictable. <laughs> yeah. It really has. Become too what? Predictable. Uh, huh. Interesting. Yeah. Got to. Uh, um, uh, cool. Get them out of there comfort zone and into opening up their minds because yeah, try as to, long as go ahead Don try to get them to try and back up things they read in the word rather than backing up things man says about what the word says yep. they seem more more bent and, mm -hmm. and eager to try to make man's words coincide with the words with God's words yeah when, when they don't <laughs> they'll, they'll run the man's words first rather than trying to back up God's words I posted John that verse from John where it says and she's there were two on the side two on that side and Jesus in the midst and this guy was arguing. It's singular. When you translate, you translate it singular. It, that's okay. It's still not there. The word it, duo is there. Yeah, so, okay. so duo, antithene, chi antithene means two on this side and two, two on that on side. side. Yeah. I mean, I mean he wanted to argue and argue for the point of view to back up the pictures of the three crosses. Yeah. Like, Unbelievable. No, okay, well, it's getting to 10 o'clock. I'm going to let you guys go.
let this thing process and then I'll download it tomorrow and start working on it. It's going to take right. a while this time. <laughs> Just like last week took a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. It worked out. I got it cut pretty well. Mm -hmm. Except for the that last splice and that 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 was obviously spliced in. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Splicing is allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Word of God never says you can't splice. That's right. As long as we get it all there. <laughs> yeah. We got that that was one of the more important verses too. So I didn't want to not put it in. The only thing I can figure is my my I had two sheets of paper and one one of them was so well laid on top of the other one that I I missed it. Oh well. Okay. I got something I want to show you. This is from tonight my what I was working from tonight. Aha. Uh -huh. And there were 14 pages. Ooh, that's a lot of pages. Yeah. And the last three are only comments and other things from uh, my blog. <laughs> hmm. I could have used the blog type, but I chose not to. Cool. Well, I sure hope Dana can get through this. Yeah, me too. The time that they're having down there. Yeah, and I don't know if that's why they're not here or if they had some family thing going on, because I know they were with their family over the weekend, so who knows what's going on. Yeah, hopefully they had some good family time. It looked like it. They shared sixty some odd pictures. <laughs> I saw a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I went through all of them, but I I saw quite a few. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good night. And to all, all of right. you, all, to right. all of you, to all of you who are out there, good night. <laughs> And...